let's get started guys my name is Alex Pachigi for for all of you that don't know me um, I'm an owner of KW Beltway Homes team at Keller Williams in McLean and um, we own uh, our team with uh, my partner Mary Anthony who is also jumping on this call a little bit later uh, total combined experience of uh, 40 plus years I've been the full-time agent in in this local area for 15 years now and uh, licensed in all three states Virginia Maryland and DC and throughout the year we have helped uh, thousands of uh, buyers and, and sellers here in the area knowing the market in and out uh, in the market in and out okay. so the purpose of this uh, webinar that I'm that I you know set up is to inform all of you what's happening with the market and uh, and if you're thinking to buy or sell, you should have this clarity so you know exactly what you're dealing with and make your, uh, your decision of how to move on with it. Or maybe you're just curious and you wanna know, I mean, it seems, it seems that everyone is interested in real estate, regardless of if immediate buyers or sellers. So the, the first thing, what, what I will do is, uh, I will go directly to uh, one of the top loan officers that I work with in the country since one of the one of the questions is uh, related to the mortgage industry and since he on the call uh, I would love for you to hear directly from him because he is doing a lot of volume and a lot of transactions daily uh, Brian uh, my question to you is overall first tell us what is the overall state of the mortgage industry so great again thanks for holding this Alex uh, again Brian Kemp I'm with George Mason Mortgage I'm located in Arlington Virginia um, see Javier's on this. Hey Javier, how you doing? Um, the overall state of the mortgage industry, it's a crazy time. Every day I get updated guidelines, but I will tell you if you're looking to buy, upgrade your house or buy in general, focus on your credit. Your credit's actually one of the most important things, um, more important than your down payment. Uh, what's happened is that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have tightened their guidelines. Uh, the FHA loans have as, as well. So sometimes you could get by with a 580 credit score. Well, now you need a 620. So if you're thinking about buying, I would suggest talking to a lender and having your credit pulled. Um, we're still giving a lot of loans. This, in April, that was the busiest month of my career. And as Alex mentioned, um, I'm in the top 1% in, in the United States. I was ranked 170th uh, for the amount of volume that I do. So I see a lot and I lend all across the East Coast. And we are still giving loans. We're not declining loans, which is great. Um, the biggest hurdle I would think is people accessing cash. So if you own a house right now, I would, and you're thinking about selling, one thing that you should talk to your banker about would be maybe getting a home equity line of credit or taking a loan on a 401k, but accessing your cash and making sure that, again, your credit is, is lined up. Uh, I'll give a quick example. I have a client right now that they were going to go FHA and with the guidelines tightening, they couldn't go FHA, but they had a collection through Verizon and it's a simple collection to get taken care of in about, I would say a week or so. And they need to get that done now to be able to purchase the house. So talking to a lender, knowing what your budget is, but overall, you know, to answer your question, Alex, it's, we're doing business as normal. Um, guidelines are a little bit tighter, but we are still lending to to anybody buying first time home buyers, people doing construction loans, um, people doing renovations. We're still lending a lot of money right now. Well, thank you, thank you for this insight. What about the, what about the folks that don't have much of a down payment? Let's say first time home buyers and people that have just uh, either don't have any down payment or have just a little bit of down payment. Do you have any products for those folks? Oh, for sure. If you're in the greater DC area, um, so I live here in Virginia in Arlington and in Virginia, there's a program called VHDA for first time home buyers where you don't have to bring, it's hundred percent financing for some of their programs. Um, you can, it has income limits. So not everybody can get qualified for it. Not every lender can do that type of loan. I just closed the loan last week where the individual got the seller to pay for closing costs. They had a rate, the rate's a little bit higher when you're getting free money and not anything down, but they only had to bring $500 to the table and they bought a condo in Reston for about 375,000, which is a great story now. So the misconception is, is that you need money. Um, and if you are a first time home buyer, 
and you talk to your lender and your income's you know below what the threshold is for your county, you can do no money down. And that goes for Washington, D.C. Um, I have a deal going on there. They have D.C. open doors. And in Maryland, it's Maryland first time home buyer. Um, those programs, they're great for first time home buyers that don't have any money. And the misconception is that, do I have to put down 20%? And the answer is no. You don't have to put down 20% on if you're not a first time home buyer. So, you know, I do a lot of loans that are 10% down or even 5% down. Thank you. And what about the jumbo loans? You know, any loans above seven sixty-five thousand? Uh, I know that many many lenders they have restrictions, and uh, I mean, basically, at some point, these loans were completely frozen. Yes. Yeah. So, the, yeah, they've they've opened up. So, jumbo money here in the greater DC area that's for loan amounts over seven hundred and sixty-five thousand. And right now, I used to be able to do ten percent down. And now we require 20% down on jumbo money. On those types of deals, you need to have a credit score over 720. You need to have what they've added because of COVID is you need to have reserves. So if you're buying a house that's a million dollars and you're putting down 20%, you need to have an additional probably $25,000 in the bank that you're not using. Um, another thing that people think is you have to have your own money. You can actually obtain gift funds too on jumbo money as long as 5% is your own money. So as long as you have 5% if you're getting a higher loan amount. But for those first time home buyers, you can get all gift funds. So it's really case by case and knowing what your situation is and talking to the lender and having him or her be honest with you. And you know, a lot of a lot of times people don't do their application right away. And I tell people try it. do your application so that I can see your credit so I can get your pay stubs and make sure that everything's okay. So now everybody has time since they're home. So that's advice that I have. If you're thinking about it, talk to a lender. Do it now versus waiting. And also, guys, my, my recommendation would be stick with a local lender. Stick with someone who is day in, day out in, in this market and, uh, and definitely not a mortgage broker because the mortgage, the mortgage brokers right now, they, they don't have really control over the loans since uh, you know, they're middlemen. And uh, it is vital right now to, to really work with someone who is knowledgeable and who gets, you know, still deals done uh, under the new madness in the mortgage industry. Uh, and my final question to you, uh, Brian, is uh, what do you foresee in the future? I mean, what's your projection and what, what do you expect to happen in the next, you know, let's say three to six months? Great question. So what I see happening, I mean, here locally and, and I work so I'm a correspondent lender, so I work under a bank and I have access to other investors. So just as Alex said, use somebody that's local versus the big banks are really struggling and they don't have the professionals that know the guidelines and you don't want to be wasting your time um, purchasing something. I, I really think that once the stores open and businesses open, then the bank's guidelines will open as well. Um, being able to do the less than 20% down on jumbo money, that should be coming back, I would say, in a month or two. It's, it's hard to tell because I really think until people can go back to their jobs, the banks are going to have tighter guidelines, meaning that not everybody can get qualified. And it's the good credit. It's the people that have their, have their jobs. I mean, that's something else. If you're looking to buy, the banks now have to go through mortgage companies. We have to do additional layers of verifying your income. So we verify your income now, and then we verify it right before closing. But I really see to answer your question next. And I've already seen it open. I know Alex, you and I talked about investment loans not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Now I can do investment loans. So there's a short period of time where I couldn't do investment loans. Um, it's, it's having a good group of lenders and I think the guidelines and everything will be changing, but for the better. Um, and I think also, you know, people living in, in the United States are also going to think to themselves, okay, going through this, I should probably save a little bit more money or have a little bit more money and then set yourself up to be, be able to purchase. Um, I, I really think it's going to be good. And all the people a lot smarter than us are projecting that the end of this year and next year is going to be some of the best for real estate. Um, and one other thing too, Alex, is that a misconception is that real estate goes down during I, I these types of, I hear this a lot every single yes. day, yeah. many, so, many, many buyers or people that are thinking to buy, they think that the market is crashing and the prices will go down big time and, and they will wait until they really get these prices on the bottom of it. 
which you know yes. is, is is very far away from the reality exactly and i mean here in arlington county the prices went up by four percent in april compared to march and it's compared to do the same where now's the time where interest rates are low no matter where you're buying because i heard one woman she's in la you know the rates are still low out there if you're looking to purchase focus on your monthly payments um you know target a monthly payment because these rates i think that they'll be low going into an election year um but who knows where the interest rates will be but this this is a lot different than in 20 uh, 2008 with uh, that crisis, the financial crisis, loans were being made of no money down and people don't have equity. You're not gonna get a lot of deals right now. Um, I'm sure you'll, you'll talk about that too, Alex, but yeah. there's not gonna be people getting deals as, as, as often in these types of areas. Some areas of the United States, yes, but not in this area. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Brian. Yes, I'll talk about it, and I appreciate you jumping in and taking the time to answer uh, my questions. And hopefully, this is a great value to all the folks that joined. Joined, and uh, guys, if you if you want to get in touch with uh, uh, with Brian, uh, please let me know. I will provide you with my contact information if you don't have it, and I will be more than happy to connect you. Uh, good luck with your other call, Brian, and uh, thank you again for joining. Yeah, thank you, guys. Good. Thank you. So. Uh, what we'll do next is uh, I will go over all the questions that um, that I have uh, prepared here um, and uh, I will go through them and at the end of it I will open up for any you know questions that I'll be more than happy to answer until then please mute yourself and uh, enjoy the presentation so really the biggest the biggest question that I'm getting right now uh, of course is is the good time to buy or sell right now and really i mean that's the million dollar question is it a good time to buy or sell well the way the way i think about it is uh right now if you're a buyer let's let's first talk about if you're a buyer if you're a buyer right now you have a small window of opportunity to really maybe negotiate slightly better terms uh, and again this depends on the on the location and the inventory levels that are overall very low but uh, if you're a buyer right now, uh, it is very likely that uh, you will not be dealing with seven, eight, ten, you know, different offers that you need to compete with. And right now, even in the top locations, I'm seeing two, three, four maximum multiple offers. So buyers right now have access to very cheap money. Uh, interest rates have been really low lately. Maybe if you're a well-qualified buyer with, let's say, above 740 credit score, you can get easily a rate that is 3.375 to 3.5. In some cases, maybe with some other supporting you know, factors, maybe you can get even 3.25. So historically, historically, this is a great interest rate to secure for 30 years. And on the top of that, with the decreased traffic, which we saw within the last two to three weeks, it, it was very possible to, uh, to really find a home where you can really get in under contract uh, where, you know, generally before the pandemic was uh, very difficult, very competitive market. And um, at the same time, um, all, of the, all of the sellers that are selling right now, they are very serious about selling. So it is kind of this market right now reminds me of the, of the winter market where you have less inventory, you have less buyers, but all of the people that are actually making a move, they're very serious. So really, I mean, the question to you would be, if you're a seller, do you want to have, you know, 40, 50 people that, you know, majority of them are just shopping around and they're looking for this dream property. And if I find my dream property, I'll buy. Or you want to deal with, you know, 10 people that are very serious and they're out there. And if they like your property and if it's priced right and presented well, they're ready to make an offer. So right now, a lot of people day in, day out are buying and selling. And uh, these are very serious people, as you can imagine. So my question to, my, my answer to this question is, I think it's a great time just because for a buyer, you can uh, negotiate probably better terms and you can uh, have access to uh, very cheap money, therefore make your mortgage payment affordable. If you're on the seller side and if you're a seller, again, we talked about it, but uh, you'd rather have you know, less serious buyers than a bunch of buyers that, you know, majority of them are shopping around. 
So that's that's the answer, um, you know, my professional answer to this question. The next question is, if you're a buyer right now, how how showings uh, are happening and uh, and what are the policies and procedures? At this time, uh, we uh, do not travel in the same vehicles with uh, with buyers. Uh, we need to travel in different vehicles. Once we get to uh, to the property, you need to wear your own mask and gloves and um, preferably not touch anything inside the house. I will be the one also wearing gloves and, and mask and I will make sure that before we even get there, I instruct the listing agent and the, and the seller to open all of the doors, uh, turn on all of the fans, lights, so everything is quite open and we don't touch anything. And this is, I believe, the safest way of, of handling showings. We already spoke about the mortgage industry. Um, oh, very good question that I'm getting all the time is, uh, what if someone, let's say you're a buyer or seller and someone gets sick uh, during the transaction once uh, you're under contract? Well, at this time, fortunately, the National Association of Realtors uh, created a new form, a new addendum. Uh, it's called COVID-19 addendum that protects either party from anything like that happen, happening. And uh, there is a clause over there where you can extend settlement if anything like this happens. So at, at this time, you know, if settlement does not happen on the settlement date because of this, then uh, this addendum allows both parties to, to extend the deal. And if it doesn't result in successful closing, nobody will be liable or in breach of the contract and simply the earnest money deposit will be returned back to the buyer and uh, the contract will become void. How is the process different now for putting a home on the market? It is a little bit more challenging, uh, but at the same time, all of our photographers are working. They're not restricted. Uh, fortunately, you know, our job is considered essential. So all of our contractors, photography, photographers, uh, they're available and uh, we do not see generally any issues with uh, preparing the home for the market, doing the necessary home repairs, and scheduling professional photography. And um, speaking about photography, it is very, very important nowadays to, uh, to have a 3D virtual tour. And I think that the whole industry is changing to that since it allows all of, all of the buyers to, uh, to virtually walk, walk the property around. We do a lot of uh, videos uh, and um, basically making it easy for anyone out there to access the property before they schedule any showing. And if they do schedule any showings, my job as being the listing agent in this particular case, if I'm working for the seller, I make sure that I pre-approve all of these buyers and uh, make sure that uh, you know, they're well qualified, they're serious, and only after that I schedule a showing. And if the property is occupied, I'm personally, uh, present at any showings which you know on our end it makes uh, it makes us work work harder but at the same time that's the the only safe way uh to protect our clients and to protect you know everyone involved in in, in this showing because i just simply cannot rely on you know agents just accessing the logbox getting a key and walking inside the property where my clients live so I personally handle all of these showings, making sure that every, everyone wears masks. If let's say there's a family of husband, wife, and two kids, I separate them. First, the husband goes inside and the wife goes inside and trying really to, uh, to keep less people inside the home at the same time. And that uh, has been working really well. What are my options for showing my home as a seller? Well, really for first option is virtual we do a virtual showing uh, we we provide uh this uh opportunity for anyone who is interested to see any of our listings or any listings out there if i'm working for a buyer i offer a virtual tour where if you request a virtual tour i will physically go to the property i will call you on video call i'll show you around and if you find this property interesting, I will then schedule an actual showing and we can go there in person. Will the real estate, oh, this is the best question of all, will the real estate market bounce back when all of this is over? Uh, 
well, that's really, you know, I don't have a crystal goal of, you know, what would happen since everything is so uncertain. But what I can tell you guys uh, is that right now, the market almost has not been affected. There was a period of about two to three weeks, you know, prior to our call today, where we saw definitely a decrease in traffic and showings. And uh, all of our listings were just sitting on the market with one to three showings probably a week. And suddenly last week, the, the traffic just came back, uh, not only on the streets, but in all, all of our properties, they received a dramatic number of showings, which on two of our properties resulted in three offers on one, six offers on another. Both of them uh, went under contract over the asking price. And um, I believe that the reason for this is that, you know, whoever was holding on to their, you know, home purchase or home selling plans, I, I think people are getting tired of all of this isolation, all of this quarantine. And uh, since, you know, there's so much uncertainty of when this will be over, people can't just, you know, freeze their lives forever. And at some point, I mean, whoever needs to move, they need to move. And um, also, uh, many people that actually were not even thinking about buying or selling, they started calling me that they realized they don't like many features of their homes. Because, uh, you know, before people were busy, intensive life, and they, they didn't realize that, you know, some features of the home that they purchased are missing. And uh, they, they realized that uh, they really want to, to buy another home, that this home no longer works for them. So I expect after everything reopens again, I expect that a lot of people actually will make a move to a better home and home that actually, you know, they'll feel happy about and it will have all of the features that they're currently missing and they're realizing that they've always missed these features. So I, I believe that the market really will, uh, will be okay, especially in our area. And um, uh, there, there are a few fundamentals that, uh, that I base you know, my opinion on. And one of it is that uh, simply there is no inventory. It's very low inventory market and uh, the buyers are out there. And um, I'm almost every week on a, on a forum with top agents from different companies here in the area. And all of them, you know, talking about their pipelines and, you know, people that decided to wait a little bit to see where the market is heading. There's a lot of people actually, sellers and buyers, that are just waiting and getting tired of waiting because they wanted to get more clarity before they make a move. Unfortunately, this clarity is not, is not coming uh, any soon. And um, uh, those, uh, those people actually are going to make a move within, we expect in July and August will be very busy. It will be basically our spring market in July and August. So whoever was considering you know, going on vacation from our industry, now we are reconsidering and postponing you know, our planned trips once everything reopens. But uh, our area also is, um, I mean, it's based pretty much on government jobs. 80% is government jobs. And uh, many of, uh, of these uh, workers have, have not been affected that much. And um, it will be interesting to see uh, the actual number of uh, how many people actually filed for unemployment just in, in, in the DC metro area, because we know the number is, uh, is scary. It's over 30 million across the United States. But I think that the uh, majority of, uh, of these people are not in DC metro area. And, uh, and many of these people I expect uh, to, uh, the ones that filed for unemployment and currently are not working, I expect many of them large percent, percentage to actually go back to work. So this will be, this will be really, uh, this will give us better direction of where the market is heading. But overall, no one from, from the top agents in, in our industry is expecting any dramatic uh, price decreases or any crash of the market or anything like that. And uh, what I will do real quick is just so you understand uh, where I'm coming from, I'll show you real quick, just for Arlington County and, uh, and Alexandria, to show you uh, uh, real quick the numbers. I'll share my, my screen uh, just for a second. Are you guys seeing my screen okay? Yep. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, very good. 
So what I wanted to show you is uh, I just picked randomly Alexandria and Arlington since these are the kind of top two areas that uh, that we specialize in. Uh, I wanted to show you that if you see on the left, uh, this is kind of a market snapshot of uh, you know what's happening with with the market in Alexandria and Arlington within the last seven days. And you can see that uh, there are 55 listings already put as coming soon on the market. 119 are the new listings, four years back to, to active, which means that they were under contract, but the deal fell through, something happened, now they're back on the market again. And 59 of those uh, reduced the, the price. But I mean, if you combine all these numbers together, we're at about uh, 160, 200, 260 listings. And if you look below that, under contract for the last seven days, 96 listings. Pending are also under contract, another 124, and 196 transactions closed. So if you combine all of these numbers together, these are uh, almost 400 uh, deals that happened within the last seven days, just in Arlington and Alexandria. So as you can see from just wanted to show you this because it shows you the demand and the supply. Basically, the supply is twice less than what the demand is. And this is not just in Arlington and Alexandria. This is almost uh, in any, any area that, uh, that, that we're serving. So that's why, you know, when people say something like the market is crashing, you know, we're going to wait, we'll wait for the market to crash so we can get and buy something, you know, at, at the bottom price. Uh, there's just no fundamentals whatsoever. The inventory is still very low. I work with a lot of builders as well. Speaking to the builders, you know, they're also not building with the enough pace to meet the demand. And as long as there is, you know, really low inventory and high demand, and people that uh, you know are taking advantage of the low interest rates. I do not see any chances of uh, you know prices decreasing. On the contrary, I expect even the prices to go up, and I expect expect at least five to six percent of the prices to go up. And um, I'm saying that because what I did is also historically, I went back through you know some of the crises that happened within the let's say the, the the last 30 years and every time there is either a pandemic or there is 9-11 uh, uh, or the, except the financial crisis which was you know artificially created and basically the banks were lending money to people that couldn't even qualify for a credit card and you know they were giving him five six seven hundred thousand loan amount that's a totally different story but um you know at, at this time right now i just I really, what I saw from all of this history is that uh, actually the real estate market is about, you know, in average five to 6% increase after any, any crisis of pandemic or even September 11. So I'm, I'm positive, I'm very optimistic. And uh, I see also our business, our business is, is more than at the same time last year in 2019, we had a very strong last year. So speaking to, Stuart Title, uh, Dian Stankov with Prime Lending, one of the top loan officers I work with. Everyone is having a great season, regardless of the challenging situation. And um, I think that, you know, we'll, we'll be just fine. And whoever is waiting to do a move, definitely they will make that move uh, in July and August. So I think that guys, now I will open the floor for, for any questions. If you have any questions, please unmute yourself and, and I'll be happy to answer the question. Alex, thank you very much for the, uh, the call. Very, a lot of valuable information. I uh, really appreciate your time. Um, got a quick question about the asking prices right now are you seeing compared to what you're used to seeing are you seeing uh most of the deals go over uh under or just about asking price well this is uh, this really depends uh depends on the on the location and uh, you know real estate is uh really uh, very micro kind of managed and uh, 
depends really on on the neighborhood school system and everything else but if if we need to talk about overall what i'm seeing is i'm seeing uh, about 20 to 25 percent uh, price reductions and uh, from the closed deals uh, the days on the market increased slightly i would say by five percent maybe and uh, the deals that are getting done are usually done around the asking price and and what i'm seeing is actually a lot of agents they are pricing the homes right um they they kind of adjusted whoever is coming on the market right now they're coming uh exactly on uh, fair market value where before the pandemic happened just because the market was such a crazy sales market and we were seeing in cases even 20 multiple multiple offers at the same time uh, i believe that many of the of the properties were slightly overpriced and uh just because they were they were moving they were moving fast and now what i'm seeing is i'm i'm seeing really fair fair market prices out there so i hope i hope that this uh, answers your question most definitely. I'm just uh, waiting for the uh, prices to go to the tax assessment value, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're one of these buyers, you may wait for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just don't see it happening. I mean, I, I also work with a lot of investors. It won't I, happen. Myself, I would love to see, you know, prices that are actually investor friendly, but the market is still not that much investor friendly unless you're going for for location and really investing in a in an area that is uh, is already very well established and you're basically investing in the in the real, in the real property itself and not relying so much on cash flow i agree thank you but it's good to hear that there's less competition out there for sure yeah right now people you know people are, are friendlier people are nicer um, i see transactions are going smoother than before uh, everyone is compassionate and uh, people are working together for the best possible outcome. That's what I see. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Any, anyone else? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, just in terms of um, sales or deals compared to um, the same period last year in your office in particular, or just yeah how is um how do the two periods compare do you have less sales now more or less the same amount i mean have you looked at it at all i did yes um i'm, yeah. I'm constantly tracking this information and um actually the numbers are pretty much the same like last year maybe there is a slight increase uh i mean a slight decrease of uh, right now uh and and mainly this is uh uh, because of uh, closed deals, but if we're talking about listings, I think that listings are pretty much at the exact pace as last year in terms of active listings. Uh, mm -hmm. The same, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Let's say the maybe with five percent difference. But that's really good. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Any anyone else, guys? You got anything in Falls Church? Uh, who is it, Stefan? <laughs> yeah. You're looking for something in Falls Church? Uh, I'll Let's be talk happy. offline. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Feel free to feel free to call me, and uh, we can we can chat more. Definitely. Thanks. Any any other questions, guys? That uh, that I didn't cover. I know that. I mean, I just picked the top questions that I'm getting asked. But maybe you have a question particularly that I did not answer, or you need just more clarity and maybe kind of go deeper on any of the questions that that I covered. Let me know. I'm here for you, and uh, you know I'm taking the time to answer any of your questions and make sure that you are well informed. And if you're doing any moves, you have the, the clarity that is available at the moment. Sorry, just a, a question, which is not really for buying places, but we are thinking actually renting out uh, the condo that I have in Alexandria. And I was wondering uh, what you've seen like, in terms of the rental market, if that's something you do with. 
Th thank you for your question, uh, Georgi. Uh, I, I don't do much rentals, so I really don't track and don't follow the rental market. Uh, but uh, uh, what, I, what I'm seeing kind of on, on the surface of it without going deeper is uh, a lot of places actually offer better terms, lease specials and so forth because I mean people were not moving at all or just a little bit during you know this uh, uh, last two to three four weeks so I, I would I would think and I would hope that uh, you know especially larger apartment complexes they should be more accommodating they should have better terms better lease terms and you know more value to, to tenants for us, it's 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 more that we are trying to rent it out. So, uh, <laughs> I guess it's. Uh, you you are trying to rent your place out. Yes. Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. I understand. But well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you. I I think that within the next, uh, you know, two to three months, you will see, you know, people that actually will be moving, and uh, I think that you know to get the best possible value for for your property in terms of just talking about renting, I think that you have the highest traffic in uh, in July and August. And this is usually the times that people are moving for one or another reason before, you know, school starts again or, you know, work starts again and, and so forth in the normal times. Right right now, uh, I really don't know, but I expect more traffic in, in July and August. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't be shy, guys. Any more questions? Hit me up. Going once. All right. I I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I can Maria. hear you. Yes, Maria. Okay. So, for people who are still employed, um, who maybe want to upgrade to a bigger house or, you know, want to purchase and invest in real estate. Um, I mean, the prices are lower. My, my neighbor sold their house at 4% 4, 4 less than what they would have gotten a couple of months ago, which is significant amount of money in the area. But, you know, I was thinking you upgrade or you make a huge investment, you have this huge loan, you know, fine mortgage rates are good. You can pay less than 20% and then you get laid off. Like, what happens then? Like, is this really a good move? I mean, that, 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 that's a great question because, I mean, this is a reality. It could happen to anyone. No one is protected. Uh, but, I mean, generally, if people are uh, making that move in first place, they should be pretty much secure in terms of their jobs and income. Otherwise, they wouldn't even consider it. But let's say that, yes, there will be a small percentage that, you know, this, this could happen to them. And uh, at, at that time, basically, the, now we start talking about different options on kind of distressed properties and situations like that. But that's where short sales come, you know, uh, and uh, usually loan modification could be one option. Uh, doing a short sale if you want to just sell the property would be another. And uh, the banks, I mean, after what we're going through, the banks are very cooperative. I mean, the banks are working with uh, any folks that are having any kind of difficulties to make sure that they help them in the best possible way to keep their properties and still have a roof above their heads. So at, at this point, you know, apparently there is a hardship uh, either going to loan modification or going to a short sale if you want to get rid of the property. Uh, this will be basically the two options. And the banks will work with you. And I expect actually the processes to be much shorter than you know doing them back in 2008 2009 because at that time i was doing almost 100 percent of my transactions uh just short sales or foreclosures does right does, and then the loss of uh the loss of transaction costs which are six percent at each uh transaction at least no, actually, the bank will be paying those expenses for the seller, for the distressed seller. So the seller is not paying. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, that's a lot of cash. 
yeah, this is something that uh, me as a listing agent will negotiate with the, with the bank to cover. But yes, uh, generally the bank the bank will pay the commissions and you know everything involved, not just the commissions but uh, transfer, recordation, settlement costs. Because I mean, thank you, Alex. Th th think about it. Uh, if if the bank just lended you, let's say, seven eight hundred thousand loan amount, and uh, suddenly you know two months later you you default and you lose your job and can no longer pay the mortgage. What is their option? I mean, if they need to go through foreclosure and let's say if we're now, now any foreclosures are, are prohibited at the moment. So the bank can't do anything if we're still, you know, in this situation with the pandemic, that's number one. And second, even if they, if they are allowed to proceed with that, that's a very complicated and expensive process for them. There's requirements that they need to meet. They need to advertise this, you know, coming auction. They need to invest in attorneys. Uh, then they need to, uh, many, many homeowners will be frustrated. They'll probably damage the property. After that, they need to do repairs on those properties. So actually turning around and reselling this property in the open market will be much more expensive to them than just, you know, working with the, with the homeowner to give them any kind of options to keep the home. Any, anyone else, guys? It's 6.48 now, so going once, going twice, and uh, I will just wrap it up, and um, I will thank all of you for being here with me. Um, if you ever have any other questions that I didn't answer or you just didn't think about them at the moment, feel free to reach out to me. And uh, my number is, if you, if you want to write it down, 202-361-1717. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions for you. And Stefan, I will uh, I'll wait for your phone call and we'll, we can chat more about your, you know, fourth church goals. <laughs> stay, stay, stay safe, everyone. Hope that everything everything is over soon and we can really you know get together and see each other in person. It will be a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank so you much, Alex. Alex. Take care. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye.